Uh, so next Definitely. up, we're going to have um, uh, Mariella from uh, Imperial Online, thank you, uh, is going to join us and moderate a panel talking about the K factor, how campaigns can be improved. Uh, you know, sorry, how campaigns can improve your organic group. I think an majorly important thing, this idea of synergy uh, between the the ad, the game, the audience. That's kind of what I was trying to get to. So Mariella, I'm going to let you take over and introduce your panel. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. Thank you, Oscar. I think it's going to be a very interesting panel. Everyone's joining. Yeah, so we got Jamie, Thomas, Nimrod, Nico, and that's all of us because uh, Sami won't be able to join us today. So uh, my aim is uh, to chat you all about the K factor and how your campaigns can also improve your organic uh, growth today. So uh, from my position uh, as part of Imperial Online for seven years, it's a game production company. I will also try to give examples of what we've seen through the years. And uh, let's start with uh, an intro of each and every one of you. Uh, Jamie, you go first. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, my name is Jamie Wardman. I'm from LabCave. We are a mobile growth 360 provider. We provide a lot of different aspects of growth for a game that may already be in the market um, or one that is looking to come into the market. We focus on app store optimization, ad mediation, internal publishing for games we make internally developed and games that are uh, externally developed as well. Okay, fantastic. Nimrod? Hi, my name is uh, Nimrod. I'm uh, uh, the head of UA at Crazy Labs. Uh, Crazy Labs used to be Taptal in the past. Um, I'm here for around uh, four years. I'm managing currently the whole UA and marketing um, efforts for the hyper casual activities. Uh, Taptal, uh, Crazy Labs, we have uh, different kinds of, uh, of games from hyper casual, which is the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, uh, vertical we're on, but we also have casual games, AP games. Uh, runners and the old uh, kids games we used to make uh, tons of uh, back in the days. Yeah, and also you have an office here in Sofia, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So let's go with uh, Thomas. Hello, everyone. My name is Thomas. I'm the CEO of AppRadar. At AppRadar, we specialized in the field of App Store marketing because in the end, it doesn't matter which kind of user acquisition you make, all the traffic will be directed to the App Store. And this is exactly where we specialized in, in the field of App Store optimization, as well as Apple search ads, to give one example. Uh, we're helping mobile games as well as apps grow since more than eight years. And yeah, happy to be on the panel today. Yeah, it will be quite important uh, to discuss the ASO as well here. And uh, Miko? Hi, Miko Kahara. I'm with uh, Kukori Mobile Entertainment. We're based here in Kotka, Finland. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I work as the chief commercial officer. So basically all things related to growth is uh, really basically on my plate. Uh, Kukori, we, I, I think we're still best known for our Tiny Troopers franchise. It's about close to 45 million downloads uh, over, over the, well, almost a decade. On, on different platforms and different titles. But in the past three and a half years, we've been focusing on Pixel Worlds, which is a sandbox MMO game with uh, retro graphics and uh, actually a good track record of organic growth as well. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for the intro. Um, so let's start. You've uh, heard of uh, going viral is so crucial for every game. So every developer wants to understand how their app's uh, user base is uh, growing and how to help that. And the K-Factor is one of the topics that uh, everyone is uh, trying to understand better with the formula and everything. So what is the K-Factor for uh, games and especially for your games, uh, Jamie? Well, the, the K factor would be the relationship between the paid growth and the organic growth. So as you pay for users, you expect to see a certain amount of organic uh, users also come along with your paid campaigns. Um, for LabCave, we don't find a straight number for every one of our games. We have quite a few games in the market, and I would say the vast majority do not provide the K factor that is easy to make decisions on, to make financial um, decisions where we know absolutely what's going to happen. And we 
focused a lot on having the store page look look correct. We're, we're constantly adjusting the keywords, the, the colors to, to work on our conversion rate, you know, what, a, what, what screenshots are calling to people, what icons are calling to people. But um, even making those adjustments and our end paid campaigns together, we're not finding that magic number um, through our games. And our data science team looks at data over an entire year trying to find these numbers. And unfortunately, um, we haven't been uh, as successful as we would like in this space. I, I will say we have had clients come to us who insist that they have one. And when we look at a year of data, some of them do, uh, but it is not consistent enough where we can say, absolutely, if you pay for this many you, uh, additional installs, you will also receive this many. Um, I think Adjust has a number where they say you should get 30% of companies will get 45 for every 100 they pay for, they should get 45 organic. Um, we've just never seen that in our numbers. I would love to be able to rely on that, but uh, I've just never seen it. I don't know, Thomas, I guess, because we kind of do similar things. Do, do you feel yeah. similar? Yeah, yeah uh, totally. So uh, I think uh, calculating the K factor is kind of the really the myth out there, I would say, the or the, the really the biggest challenges probably that we have there, because it's just so much complexity that plays into role. Because uh, I mean, depending really on which kind of user acquisition channels uh, you're driving traffic and then also really calculating what in the end comes through organically on top. Uh, especially also since uh, the app stores are making the life not really easier, also making it a little bit more complicated uh, over the last uh, couple of months and also years uh, in the case of Apple, where they're also not really separating anymore uh, when you see search traffic. It, there is not really a split up if this was now search traffic that was organically or if it was paid search, search traffic, uh, like it is, for example, in the new Google Play console now. So also this makes life not really easier. I think one of the things that can be done to measure kind of the K factor, but really depends also on the case if it's uh, doable, is to run a very separated and isolated test uh, in a specific country where you send traffic over to, uh, only pay traffic and then you wait a bit and uh, then you see how much organic traffic will last after this kind of uh, first step. Uh, this might be a way to find out, but also I, I think I don't have to tell you if you do it in an isolated market, it also doesn't mean that it applies to every market out there. So once again, yeah, a bit more yeah. complexity. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask uh, Nimrod, if uh, they have tried this uh, with a specific country to understand better the K factor. Yeah, so I, I would I would say that the K factor is something obviously you you measure um, on past performance. You can't predict anything that's going to happen uh, based on your actions. Uh, also, K factor is something that changes from game to game, from operating system to another, even from different countries. I mean, the K factor in U.S. is very different from K factor in China, and the K factor in U.S. iOS is very different from the a U.S. Uh, Android chart. So, so it's something that we we really don't have any any way to 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 predict or to, to base our decision uh, on. Uh, but we do use uh, obviously the K factor in calculation for our bids. Uh, we use the, the organic uh, the organic installs that are coming um, to boost our bids and to to be able to uh, uh, buy more efficiently. Um, so we always try to improve um, what else, what, what's there to be improved there, if it's the App Store listing and A-B tests and everything. Uh, we do see some um, like influencers uh, that are doing uh, really well for our K-Factor, either if they're sponsored by us or if it's only like their channel and they're um, I don't know, um, promoting a game on their own. Um, we do see some great miracles. Um, App Store features is something that really helps the K-Factor uh, for a limited time. Um, so so uh, for us, it's just a bonus to, to our strategy. Uh, we don't yeah. have it in any way and it changes. Very the much. App Store featuring something that I want to discuss furthermore <laughs> in the next questions. Uh, and uh, Miku, how about you? Do you uh, see any kind of uh, K-Factor for your games? We, we do, we do, and uh, and with, with Pixel Worlds, I mean, it's majority of all of our uh, traffic is really organic, so we, we don't, we haven't done that much UA in the past, but we do have a, a, a privilege of coming, having a long lifetime with, the, with 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 Pixel Worlds, which means that we can we do have data to to look at, and uh, how we calculate K K factor is really us looking at more like organic traffic, sort of try, trying to 
minimize the effects of, of any sort of influences, minimize the effects of, of featuring in the data that we look. And then we just look at organic traffic and how much additional traffic they bring. So it's basically just looking at uh, the life, the average lifetime of, of, of a player and, and sort of multiplying that with sort of average uh, new users per daily active users. So, so kind of we can figure out a, a, a multiplier of basically one, one new organic user is going to bring another one within six months, for example. But that's, that's just one, one of the uh, sort of aspects that we look at there. Um, uh, and what we have been doing in the past 12 months is really sort of stimulating uh, organic growth. And that's been how we see that, you know, when we do UA and influencer campaigns, it's really us triggering organic growth to begin with it's uh, obviously we do get new users through ua and and, uh, and and influencer campaigns and featuring and all that but the beef is really for us to push the the daily active users level uh, level to uh, to a higher degree and what we've seen is that the actually the the uh, percentage of new users uh, on a daily basis is quite constant regardless of the size of the um, of the markets obviously there there are limits to it but uh, we haven't really run run into those which means that by sort of we've do, been doing some inten intensive sort of market to market testing and uh, and and basically i mean in, in some countries we we have like every 10 tenth of uh, our core audience of 8 to 18 year olds playing pixel wars daily uh, we, and that's kind of the measuring stick where we can scale up the game for, from our perspective. So it's really yeah. the kind of key, key metrics there. Yeah, for us as well, the simplest way to understand uh, the K factor is to apply it during uh, user acquisition campaigns. And uh, we wanted to see for the web browser games, uh, because I want to broaden the prospect not only to the mobile apps, but also to the uh, PC games. So for browser, uh, for our browser games, when we stopped uh, the user acquisition for a few months, we didn't see any kind of changes uh, for the organic registrations, which was uh, um, kind of tricky. Then uh, we were wondering whether to start the campaigns again, uh, but during the pandemic, it made sense for us. Uh, how about you, Jamie? Did you uh, see any kind of changes in the past months and uh, what are the effects of uh, paid use user acquisition on organic installs for you? We have seen, uh, you know, a rise in users, as I'm sure many companies have seen um, more people uh, coming around to play, um, which is which has increased our, um, you know, the, the um, ads within our game and, and the money made from our team, but not necessarily increased the in-app purchases. This has been an interesting, um, interesting bit of data that we've noticed while we have this increased amount of users um, and you know, again, because we're always working on our organics, um, you know, we're, we're continuing to see users come in and more from an organic basis than from a paid basis. But um, but we're just not seeing the same switch over in terms of more users seems like it should bring in more IAP. And uh, unfortunately for us, it, it has not. And I know it's a little outside of the scope of what we're talking about just in terms of K factor here, but it just is an interesting thing to note from this coronavirus time of this increase of users, um, but not necessarily always I mean, again, games are all, each game is different that we have, but um, the vast majority aren't seeing that increase in IAP. Yeah. And uh, what about you, Thomas? Uh, do you think that uh, most of uh, the developers are experiencing some kind of changes uh, in uh, the way organic traffic is coming to their uh, games? Yeah, so I also uh, I can uh, also second the opinion of Jamie in this regard, yeah, because what we have also seen is just uh, downloads, uh, new installs, new users have been up uh, kind of through every kind of category. I mean, the, since we're also working with apps, for sure there were categories like travel apps, for example, they had a massive crash. Uh, but uh, when looking especially at gaming and there at the different categories, I would say, generally speaking, everything went up. But also what we have seen when looking at the data is on the one hand, yes, monetization of those people uh, has been a little bit, yeah, it didn't go up in the same extent. And also on the other hand, uh, what we have seen that the lifetime or how long do players stick to a game was also massively dropping. And uh, I can also refer a little bit back to my kind of uh, behavior when the pandemic started. And I was also thinking, okay, now I got some time, let's check out the app store. 
And I think I was just downloading many, many games and was trying them out. And I'm quite sure that I was not the only person with this behavior. And yeah, I think that also here. the numbers, exactly. Yeah. I think at the numbers just show it because people then had more time, had more time to try out different things. And uh, I think all kind of the numbers that we're seeing is showing, are, is showing exactly that. So I think it has kind uh, in the first, you know, like it was this hype. Yes, uh, a lot of new users, but then I think uh, over time it was uh, also a little bit of frustration. Uh, yeah, but where's the money? Um, so uh, yeah, I think that sums up uh, quite well our observation that we have seen over the last couple of months. Okay, and uh, Nimrod, uh, do you see more or less organic installs result from uh, the paid ones for your company? Yeah. So, so um, a different from game to game, uh, some games had a very big increase uh, 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 during the pandemic, um, especially between March and, and June. Um, also, also saw like something uh, very unique that happened for the first time since I'm in this industry, that the weekdays and the weekends looked exactly the same. Uh, <laughs> there used to be like a big differences between a Tuesday and a Sunday uh, in terms of the amount of organic installs and of obviously uh, how well the UA campaigns did. Um, so this, what, it was a good thing for us uh, to be able to, to look at every day the same and not always thinking about what's going to happen during the weekend. Now we see uh, the weekends are becoming more and more significant, uh, not as it was in January, but uh, but it's not as, as it was like two months ago. Um, what we all also saw um, in July, which was quite interesting, um, is anticipation for games. Uh, we released a new game uh, in July called Tie-Dye. I don't know if you're aware of that, but uh, we released it in, on iOS. Um, and what we saw is that uh, people, uh, it, it, it really created a hype. Uh, people with uh, iOS devices played it for two weeks before uh, it came to Android. Um, and then uh, we started seeing on social media and on TikTok uh, comments and stuff like that, people uh, with Android devices really begging us to release the, the Android version. Um, so when we did launch it two weeks later, uh, we started it with no UI at all. And we saw around 60 to 70,000 uh, organic installs a day without doing anything. Um, it's something that we didn't experience before and, and, and I think it has to do something with the fact that people uh, are at home and the, some of the way to communicate uh, is by sharing experiences like uh, new games and stuff like that and Tide uh, was really hitting some good uh, viral uh, effect of word to mouth uh, that wasn't affected by any UA campaign on Android and uh, uh, did really well for us. Okay, that sounds interesting. Uh, I guess uh, you also worked on the way people were able to share uh, about the game uh, in the social media so that it could actually go viral because that's quite important too. And uh, how about you, Miko? Do you share uh, the thought that uh, featuring the app is also a growth hack? And have you seen any other changes during the pandemic? Well, well, yeah. I mean, featuring it. it uh, well, it's kind of traditional growth hack, I suppose. So it, it, it'll boost uh, boost the um, uh, the growth, but it's kind of uh, secondary. I mean, it's uh, the traffic that you usually get from 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 featuring is not 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 that as high quality as as your sort of primary organic growth, which is really word to mouth. And uh, and that's uh, I mean, for us, I mean, our, our core audience is uh, is is really you know. Gen Z and, and and even younger. I mean, uh, school kids mostly, and for them, obviously, I mean, sharing their experiences with games with their friends are really really uh, strong. So, uh, and that's our sort of primary source of growth that we we focus on, making sure that the the kids have a good experience and they bring their friends in and uh, and, and and enjoy the social aspects of the game. And and this is something that we we actually. We did see. Uh, we, we we were actually expecting to see a decrease in in organic growth after uh, during the pandemic, uh, since you know kids are not meeting each other at school because they're locked down. But uh, it didn't really happen. I think, uh, uh, and I think one of the key reasons that we we saw a huge spiking activity of the game. So basically, past six months been looking like from from metrics perspective like a big 
long holiday or a big weekend. Yeah. So, so, so we saw uh, an increase in session, uh, daily session counts. We saw an increase in daily active um, uh, time played, and uh, and and it did. It didn't have any effect, a negative effect in the in the organic growth. So I suppose I mean people do, uh, they play more and they are more active, in, even though they don't meet each other personally. They they are still more active in the sense of sharing their experience for the game. And what did you do in terms of the uh, way people were able to share uh, their experience in the game? Was it just uh, only Facebook integration or also WhatsApp and other uh, channels uh, where they can actually tell their friends, uh, come and play? Did you have rewards uh, for the uh, inviter, the invitee? No, not really. I mean, uh, I mean, most of our audience, for example, I mean, they don't use Facebook or anything like that. So um, it's we introduced a clan function to the game in uh, earlier last year, which I think was a really kind of a key driver in, in, in sort of bringing the, uh, especially introducing people into the social aspects of the game. And um, <clears throat> and I think that's that was really kind of the key. And we do have a very sort of active community and active forums and all that. So so we, we do keep, uh, and, and we're producing new stuff every week in on, on YouTube, and stuff like that. So it does, uh, keep people quite engaged and uh and and, and the kids well I and mean, they they found a way find a way to to really sort of uh communicate with each other on, on different languages and, and different yeah. forums and stuff like that. that sounds really interesting and uh jamie uh have you seen that uh the design of the message uh, for sharing uh, is important or there are also other channels where uh people find a way to share a new game and you don't exactly know which they are? I mean, there's always going to be a little bit of that, right? You can't yeah. track word of mouth the same way. Um, you know, depending on the style of game, uh, you know, we could be a little bit more active on Instagram, for example, if we're trying to hit more female users. Um, it, it really is, it, it's not that, there's always going to be some idea where there's some traffic where you're not 100% sure where it came from. Um, and I think we're going to see more of that coming up Um soon with it with an, with an iOS especially uh, with some of the changes coming up but um, you know most of the time we're, we're aware uh, you know where the users are coming from um, but you know I think that these I think that these adjustments of, of constantly wanting to widen where you're going to find your users are going to become it's it's, it's normal and, and normal to get that um, um, people liking your game, especially during, like you said, during the pandemic time where they're talking about it and maybe, uh, have you played this one? We should, we should compare our scores. Um, definitely my husband and I have been doing that during this, this pandemic, like what level are you on, you know, and then you're pushing somebody else to download, um, which is an avenue that you may not have known you have, um, this family's virality and friends. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Thomas? Uh, do you think the app store optimization works here as a factor? Uh, yes, uh, I totally think so, uh, because what we have also seen uh, just over the last months is that the traffic to the app stores itself, I think in total, has just been rising constantly because just of so many more people think of school kids don't have to go to school, have a smartphone. I mean, what will they do? Probably look for new games, for example. Yeah. So uh, just the traffic sources that was going through the app store was just increasing which also means that the people who were already doing quite a good, decent job within the app stores were, I also think, kind of the, the big winners out of uh, just the last couple of months, because in the end, it was just amplification of traffic of source uh, bringing into the app store. And if you have been doing a good ASO before, so meaning that you have been ranking for relevant keywords uh, where players can totally identify, okay, this is a keyword, this is a game, this is a perfect match, I want to play this now. If you have done this already prior to the pandemic, uh, then it was just uh, really good for you because you had the good rankings already and there out of a sudden was just a massive spike in traffic, so to say, coming to the app stores. Same applies for all uh, different other channels within the app stores, so meaning featureings. Also there, if you uh, really nail your featuring, uh, if you already optimized it a bit, fine-tuned it a bit to really attract more people, also then also more users clicked on it, the conversion rates were higher. But uh, when talking about featurings, I think it's also very important to say that there is a difference between featuring and featuring, because it is a difference if you're on the first page, uh, the first game that is being uh, featured, or if you're in the games category of the subcategory of the subcategory on the third page. Um, so there probably you won't get that much traffic in comparison. So therefore, I think it's also quite important uh, when talking about featurings to also identify where are you featured 
which you can yeah. easily do with an app radar, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely agree here because uh, from my personal experience, it's quite important how exactly you fill out the form when you want to get a featuring and which countries you actually chose for this because uh, and where your game is uh, popular and what you've done for the App Store optimization uh, before the featuring. So you're quite right here. And Nimrod, you mentioned about uh, your new game in July uh, going viral. So um, what do you think that made it uh, go viral? I mean, in terms of the design or something that you did right, uh, many people would ask you that questions. Yeah. I mean, uh, when working at the hyper casual industry, you're required to release new games all the time. Um, it's ideas is the hardest thing to do in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in this industry because you have so many competitors, new games are coming from your competitors all the time so you need to always find uh, what's trending what's new what people like uh, we made it the habit to to be on youtube on snapchat on tiktok on snap on instagram uh, everywhere people post content and see what's trending what's uh, working well um, and tie-dye for example is a, is an example of uh, 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 a trend on, on all the social media platforms that uh, had millions of views and people are uh, making their own tie-dyes at home and uh, it seems very fun and easy and people want to wear the, the clothes that they dye. Um, so we thought, yeah, why the heck, why won't we make a game out of it and see, see what's going to happen. Um, and it's probably one of the best games we've made so far. Um, in every single aspect, in downloads, in LTV, in um, K Factor, like everything works really well for this game. And uh, um, it's very important to be very precise when you're coming to the ideation process and, and, and try to think not what you think is fun, but what your audience uh, might think is fun and, and see what they like at, at the moment and, and not not always try to dictate what is the next trend, but always look what is the current trend and, and write on it. Yeah, and uh, Miko, can you share which is the game that you believe uh, had the most uh, of the K factor for your game portfolio? Oh yeah, well, Pixel Worlds, hands down. I mean, uh, well, uh, Tiny Tropus games, I mean, the audience was, was a bit different. I mean, we were focusing on strategy game fans that are generally, you know, uh, males, th uh, what, 30 to 40, something like that, who don't really speak about the games they play to their friends or anything like that. So it's really kind of more reliance on, on alternative sources, whereas the uh, uh, with Pixel was really the audience is, is, is really the key of, uh, of, of, of the organic growth. Yeah, I absolutely get it here with the male audience because uh, uh, we struggle a lot uh, from uh, their opinions in the forums, but I, I actually don't share anything positive most of the time. So it's uh, quite a tricky audience. Uh, and it really depends on the platform for us. So uh, most of the question that questions I see from the audience are related uh, to how exactly you calculate the K-factor. I think we discussed it a little bit, uh, but if you'd like, uh, we can spend uh, a bit more time on this question. Is there anyone who can add something? And there is a, like a formula, I don't remember it uh, by heart, but uh, eventually if you, uh, run a user acquisition campaign and you buy 10,000 installs, but eventually you see 12,000 installs coming in, you have this additional 2,000 installs that came from in, indirectly from, from your campaign, uh, but they're with correlation to what you did, but they didn't exist before you opened that campaign. So because of that extra 2,000 installs, your K-factor is now 1.2. Uh, K-factor should be higher than one, and uh, uh, obviously the higher the better. Yeah, thank you for this because it's quite important to clarify it before, before going further. Uh, so um, you mentioned it once, uh, so my other question uh, is, no matter how old an app 
might be. There's always the chance uh, for K factor, in my opinion. But is it uh, the same from your experience? I mean, everyone uh, here has different kind of perspective. Maybe we can start with uh, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so generally speaking, uh, when talking about how old is a game, and now especially looking at the app stores, uh, what we have seen is totally if you have an, let's, let's call it an older app store entry, this means that you created your app a couple of years ago, and you have it within the app store, and you're still working on it, you're still updating it, uh, people out there see it's still alive, and it's not in like a zombie, or it's already completely dead. Uh, if this happens, uh, what we see within the app stores is that also the app stores tend to give older games, tend to give older apps a bit more of strength when it comes to the topic of app store optimization in terms of ranking for keywords. Because one of the reasons is just that you have this one entity that already has a lot of historical downloads and historically downloads are also a ranking factor within the app stores for kind of different uh, things. For example, like how visible are you in specific keywords? And so therefore, from this perspective, uh, they all the, the game, and as mentioned, it needs to be still alive, and people also need to see it as still alive, the better in terms of your app store optimization. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Miko, have you uh, seen it for an old app of yours, uh, some kind of organic uh, traffic? Well, well, I mean, you can say that Pixel was is quite, quite, uh, quite old, but we do see a lot of players who are been with us since the beginning, so so for more than three years. And uh, since we have that base of people who are, I mean, a long retention tail, they do obviously inf impact others as well. So so there's like this, uh, an, uh, a constant effect of, of having a certain degree of K factor in, in with every retained user. But yeah, I mean, Tiny Troopers, for example, I mean, we, we, we did see about three and a half million of uh, downloads last year, and we haven't really touched the game in four years. So, so ba basically, on, on on its very twilight, so time drop is too. I mean, on, on mobile, so 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 it's there. I mean, people do enjoy the brand and and and, and enjoy the uh, the content that we that we have uh, if, if 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 it's relevant. So so I, I guess it's like the longevity of the brand also the, affects the K factor. Absolutely. And are you still um, on Windows platform? And do you see the same effect there? Uh, so on PC, uh, yeah, I mean, what we've seen, yeah, it pretty much follows the same kind of uh, patterns, yeah. Yeah, because I remember that one of our partners, Game Troopers, that are our exclusive uh, publisher on Windows, uh, were uh, giving us always examples with Tiny Troopers, which is uh, quite nice that we are here and can catch up on this as well. So um, I wanted to, to ask uh, Jamie here um, if she knows something more about uh, the Google Play uh, beta uh, calculating uh, new changes uh, from this year, uh, because it quite uh, made us actually uh, do some changes in the strategy. Uh, can you share more about this? Sure, I, I will say that Google can do whatever they want. So this is just based on what our team has researched so far in the console and we'll see what actually happens when the official console comes out. But what we're seeing right now is that the Google ads are being put into the search uh, and explore traffic. Um, and the, the reason that that's going to be a, an issue potentially going forward is um, while they're giving you a lot more information than we had before and being able to break down kind of where your traffic's coming from, um, those Google ads are paid traffic. And so being able to say exactly what was your organic traffic, what came to you without a paid acquisition campaign will be that much harder to determine based on the information because they're putting them together. When you're taking your channels that are usually the channels you would go and look at for your virality. I mean, how are, how are your explore channels working? How are, how are people finding your game? Um, and then your search channels to know what's going on with your metadata. When you add paid traffic into that, it just really muddies the waters of trying to figure out what's what's happening what is what is happening with my app how are people responding to it in the stores um and then there's also uh the retained installers report appears to uh be missing from the latest version so i mean right now for our team trying to figure out where users come from what they're responding to and then how what what we can do to adjust further there's some concern internally about this um, but i will say on the other side you know if you're 
you know, putting together your UA campaigns with your organic campaigns, which you should be doing anyway, you should be, you know, a cycle of ASO and user acquisition campaigns, this may end up being a good thing in the long run, because you're going to be having these um, really strong ads within Google that will let you know maybe if your metadata is working quite well in terms of your how your user acquisition is going forward. So um, it's, yeah. it's a lot to take in right now. It's a lot of new information that we're, you know, the teams are, are um, digesting and figuring out how do we move forward with, um, you know, being able to show, you know, potential clients that come in what traffic we were able to bring to them by the adjustments we've made becomes a little bit harder. Um, but overall for us in the games that we publish, we're, we're kind of excited to see the additional information that, that the console is providing. Yeah, I was about to ask actually Thomas if he sees it as a positive or negative thing, those changes in terms of uh, app store optimization. Yeah, so both, uh, I would say, is the, <laughs> is the answer to it. Uh, yeah, the, the downside is uh, that it will be harder just to really figure out, okay, what is now really organic and what isn't. So that's, I think, the big downside. But on the other hand, I also have to say, uh, and I assume people that are spending time within the Google Play console can very much relate to this. Uh, the changes in terms of user experience and also UI and all this stuff uh, is really great uh, with the new console compared to the, to the old one. Uh, because uh, I think in the old console, it was from time to time quite hard to find exactly what you have been looking for. And so therefore, I think just in terms of usability, it has been a major step uh, on, uh, side of, uh, on the side of Google, which also will relate to that you will be able to easier analyze what's really going on. You will be able, as Jamie said, to really also dig down more into user acquisition strategies. But I also think really to go more into retention and stuff like this as well, to really get a bigger picture of what is happening from kind of the true source, so to say, from Google, from with official numbers. So therefore, I think, yeah, both. On the one hand, bad that we are losing information. On the other hand, great, because I think user experience just made a massive boost. Yeah, I guess we just need to adapt to the new changes as every, every time uh, happens. And what about new Nimrod? How do you actually track uh, your uh, K-factor? Uh, what do you use as a tool? Um, we are using obviously our uh, MMP uh, expire to, to track all our installs uh, in order to see um, the whole picture of our UA efforts, our organic efforts, and, and we're integrated in it to RBI into many many processes. So um, we don't have any specific uh, ASO tool that will allow us to do that, but. Uh, um, I mean, everything calculated based on the total numbers we see from our MMP. Um, uh, obviously, we do a lot to, to, to improve our K-factor with all the A-B tests in the store. And, uh, and uh, we don't take it for granted. We don't say, okay, this is my K-factor now and this is how it's going to be forever. We always test and optimize uh, keywords, like everything possible. Um, we can't say that definitely something worked, even though it was green on the test and it passed and everything. You don't, you don't necessarily um, see the result right away, but uh, this is a constant uh, improvement. Some of our games are three, four, five years old, and they still need to be updated with new keywords. And uh, from time to time, you need to change their icon or the screenshots, and um, you just don't let them die in the store. And, uh, by by the fact that we also do that on a, on a weekly or monthly basis for some of the apps, uh, we are able to maintain uh, apps to live longer and uh, and uh, to still be uh, generating us good amount of money and profits. Okay, so I don't think that we have much time left for the questions, yes. but some of them uh, were answered. Um, so. I guess what's left is uh, to discuss if the K factor is related to the effective uh, CPI. Oscar, do we have time for this? Okay, so Miko, uh, can you share your thoughts about this? Well, well, yeah, it, it is. And, and, and we've been doing, um, as I said, we haven't done that much, you know, user acquisition or, or anything like that. But when we have, it's been basically country by country kind of burst campaigns and, uh, and, and lifting up the, uh, the, the daily active usage base. And we do see uh, the 
effect on e e eCPI. So, so it, it, it comes with a bit of a delay. So, so basically, if we, we get, uh, if we really burst um, uh, new users in, 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 in like on a week, two week uh, period, we see an, uh, a gradual increase in organic growth over the, over the next month. So it, it kind of follows, follows uh, after one to three week uh, cycle, but it, it, it always kind of pops up into the same, same area. So if, if we look at the ECPI, we need to sort of look at, looking, uh, look at the longer period of time, not just related to, towards the, to the time period when we actually do UA or other campaigns. Okay, um, so let's uh, sum up uh, that uh, actually uh, what you need to have in order to see the K-Factor is a quite nice game, which can uh, go viral by itself on the first place. And of course, to work uh, a lot on your app store optimization, on the way it can be uh, shared and um, um, like you, all of you said um, actually to um, to see uh, country by country if this factor is um, uh, incentivized by, by anything uh, related to your user acquisition campaign so that you can work on this locally and uh, reach the right audience actually with it. So uh, thank you much uh, everyone for uh, participating. I think it was a great uh, topic and uh, we added uh, for a lot of information for the developers that was that was great stuff and um, actually one one area i'd like to throw in um yeah. so I, i'm a big believer that the closer your live operations is with your user acquisition the more you use the key same messages the way you use the events and the communication of the activity of the game the better effect you can have in in your k factor uh is that something other people have seen or is it just me that's that's, that's finding that does anyone want to sort of comment on the connection between the live running of the game and the actual user acquisition and whether there's a, a, a for, synergy with that? For us, that's really kind of the key how we, um, how we um, create uh, marketing creatives. Mm -hmm. So we want to create, um, we usually use, use like, you know, kind of influencer um, type uh, video creatives that look like you know you, you're actually an, an influencer playing the game, and we usually use our community manager who's who is producing uh, live uh, content of the game on, on streams and videos and on, on a weekly basis. So the idea with behind that is really to to introduce the the players to the actual look and feel of not not just the game but the community of the game and, and, the, and the methods of the game from from early on. No, absolutely. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And another thing I find really interesting is when you kind of effectively kind of empower the players to support that process and incentivize them to do that. Now, that's not possible with every game, don't get me wrong. But I think, you know, like Time Troopers type stuff, I think it's really kind of a key way of, of thinking about how, how games work. I mean, Nimrod, you're, you're nodding away there. Is that agreement or are you... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I do. I do agree. I I also think one thing that will that is really important is to have your own IP. It's really easy to say, but very hard to do. Uh, but if you look at the Subway Surfers and the Candy Crush and yeah. uh, Talking Tom franchise, uh, they have their own IP and they're doing really well on the organic side, even without spending a lot of uh, UA. I think Subway Surfers are not doing any UA, but they were in the top charts uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, just by by uh, the virality of the game, um, and we see for some of our games that uh, if we have, for example, Run Sosa Run, with which is three years old, um, with 130 million downloads, 90 million downloads are organic. Uh, the the IP of the game is very important to uh, to to be recognized, and the fan base of the app is something that is very important, and you need to keep it and maintain it. And you mentioned Subway Surfers, and I, and I, I, I did two hours of consulting on Subway Surfers, which was completely useless. I just basically said I loved the game. Um, but what I think fascinating about what those guys did uh, is that they really did listen about the, the, what, what people could look forward to. And I think in they're, they're a really good example of where they tie in their kind of user acquisition with the ongoing engagement in the game, that kind of visiting a city, visiting a country, that kind of travel, that real sort of connection with the player's ambition as well as the marketing i think that's really pivotal and like you say the fact that they've got their own ip to do that and they're authentic with it 
I think he is yeah. magical. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, you, you, know, you know me. You, you, you guys have any got thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, uh, maybe to to bring in a little bit of a different perspective because we're also working together with apps, so not only games. And on the app side, what we see there is, uh, I think this refers to very well, is also the branding effect. So it is really about uh, on the game side, you build up your IP. If you're an app, you try to build up your name, so you know, like the people know you out there. In the beginning, they will probably know you for ah, this is the dating app, but later they will say ah, this is Tinder. And I think this is the kind of the same stuff that applies here, because also once you have this big brand, once people know you by name, then also a lot of, you know, like organic use acquisition will just happen in comparison, so to say. Well, there's another factor there, I think, which is like when you get that branding right, you become the verb for that app. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. The Uber, exactly. I'm going to get yes. an Uber is a verb. And I think a subway surfer is a genre. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it, when we know a candy crush sort of surfer i mean i argue candy crush is much more difficult because we've got bejeweled as the historical phrase for that but i mean i think there's a real kind of thing about branding which i think very few uh, mobile games people are focused on I, I think that's because in some ways arguably user acquisition have been so successful because we can see money spent users install return on an investment it makes anyone whose job it is to get users so much simpler to get promoted for want of a better phrase to get your bonuses if you're a brand person if you're trying to create up the you know the become the verb of that game genre that's a much harder thing to measure it's a much harder thing to get promoted over totally <laughs> uh, and i think that authenticity and the social connection you know social media connection is so key to getting that balance right but um, you know, maybe maybe the, the, the positive of the um, uh, IDFA uh, um, going away could be that we actually have to spend more time marketing. On branding, <laughs> well, least, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, you know, uh, Marianne, do you guys have any views on this sort of uh, kind of broader marketing or socialization side? Yeah, actually, uh, with the new game that we handle, Siege uh, World War II, uh, this year uh, we worked a lot on the branding in Bulgaria because we are a well-known company here, the biggest uh, Bulgarian game developer. And it was quite important how we are going to introduce this game to the audience. Um, and we saw that uh, actually they... Uh, <coughs> all of the users that are so loyal for uh, 15 years here and they know us just because we are a Bulgarian company, they were willing to, to try the game just because it's from Imperial Online now. And we saw lots of organic uh, uh, growth in Bulgaria just uh, because of a simple announcement of an upcoming uh, um, championship that was involved with an influencer. And I actually think that uh, working with influencers that understand your game and have played it and uh, know how to um, build a community inside the game uh, is crucial for the branding. And if you're doing it locally, like we did it here for Bulgaria because we didn't want to ruin our brand because it will uh, then uh, be a topic that's discussed when we try to um, to have new talent coming in in our company. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, quite a tricky job, but I think we did it well. Ooh. Yeah. So, Yomi, do you have any kind of thoughts you want to add to that? I mean, my only th thought I was thinking as everyone was talking about how logical it is to, you know, build your brand up and to have creatives that work with your live ops was about like what Play Playrick does, how they have ads that mean that you, you do have the same character, but the, the game is nothing like it and they're incredibly successful so th there's also got to be some of this um playing against the normal see of you see other people doing because um there's there's users who maybe would would respond to that and they want to play that game they come in then they're like oh well, this is a fun game to play now that i'm here um it's just it's interesting it's interesting that the thought process if you want to go with what everyone is doing and what is logical or if you want to totally buck the trend and, and try something different that's a really fascinating area i wish we had more time to go into it because I, I i think that what what you've hit on there is why those things really work is when they're surprising when you're shaking people out of expectation and i don't think that's necessarily at odds with the kind of use of live ops connection i think I think the, the ability to use dissonance appropriately and resonance appropriately 
is a subtle part of what makes communication, marketing communication so important. And being a brand that's associated with that is great. The problem is when you become associated with bait and switch and therefore not trusted. And I think that's one of the biggest problems with the kind of like the say a Farrett's kind of model is it's great if you're going to get attention, but at what point does it become damaging to the brand? And if brand is going to become more important, and I don't know if this is true or not, I'm not making any, any references to Cleric, but Cleric's for um, myself. It's just, I think there's a really interesting dilemma that's got to be thought through when you're taking that strategy. They've done an amazing job of that. Great. Well yeah, done yeah. for them. <laughs> but other people trying to follow that, they may not understand why that works. And I think that's the thing that we as marketing people, as, as growth people, have to consider. It's not just that it worked, but why it worked, and to be true to that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, on that note, thank you guys so much. Uh, really great panel. Uh, uh, Mariella, thank you so much for hosting that. That was fantastic.